Amen. Is anybody ready to worship the Lord with us this morning? Thanks for being here. I, I hope you noticed uh, we've made some updating and uh, we're still in the process. But uh, today I, I just wanted to start off by speaking to you about our focus. I don't know if anybody is like me, but I'm tired of having to focus on all the negativity in the world. Any, anybody with me? I'm tired of having to just hear about all the bad, about people fighting with one another, about worrying about this virus and the economic situation and I want to ask you if you would before we sing together before we get started can we bow our hearts and lay aside all the distractions of the week of the days before us and uh, let's just focus on the one who deserves it we're here in this beautiful new carpet we're here with the new chairs all, all the sound and lighting we're trying to figure all that out but even that's not the focus it's Jesus Christ and him crucified we could I ask you to pray with me before we begin father thank you for all the good things you pour out upon us thank you for your spirit that's in this place as we're gathered in your name and we just want you to be glorified we want you to be greater than all the problems of the world we want you to be our focus this morning so we rejoice in you, we trust in you, and we lift up the name of Jesus. And all in agreement said, would you give God praise before we sing to him? Will you please stand with us? Let's get ready to worship the Lord together. Oh, this is 
amazing grace. This is unfailing love that you would take my place, that you would bear my cause. You laid down your life that I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Sing it out. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Oh, worthy. you would take my place, that you would bear my cross. You laid down your life, that I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Amen. done for us. Amen. Amen. God, I'm just so thankful for you and for the opportunity to get to come before you, God. This is such a blessing, having it to be here together in a new facility, God. It's just so good. You're so, so good. We're here to worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Sing this with me. And are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin, Jesus is calling you. And have you come to the end of yourself? And do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling.
Thought by now they fall, but you have never failed me yet. Waiting for change to serve this morning. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my
this this morning. No matter what's happened, he's still in charge. God's on his throne and my trust is in him. Sing it out. I've seen. I've seen you move. You move the mountain. I believe. I see you do it again. To him again, we trust you, God. Your promises, your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness, still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never. so thankful that, again, no matter where we're at, God, no matter our situation, no matter what we're going through, God, you've never failed us yet, and you never will. God, that with you on our side, (laughs) we can do all things. God, that you can make a way when there truly seems like there is no way. God, you are just so good. We're so blessed. We're so thankful. I'm so glad that you are faithful to us, even sometimes when we seem that we're unfaithful, God. But that you meet us again and again and again and again where we're at. God, I just thank you again for your blessings. You're so good, God. Lord, we are here to learn and to grow in you. God, open our hearts to hear your word. And 
God, walk with us as we continue to go through this service, Lord. Bless Daniel as he brings the word this morning, God. Give him the energy that he needs, God. Give him the words to say. And help us just to hear from you. We love you, Lord, and give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we give him praise this morning? Can we just give him a hand clap of praise? God, you are so good, and we thank you for who you are. Amen. You may be seated. Man, if you're glad to be in God's house this morning, could somebody say praise the Lord? Good. It helps me to know that you're out there and uh, that you're with us. Again, I, I missed you so much last week. We were still working on uh, some of the renovation and trying to get stuff ready. And you may see we're still in the midst of some upgrades and improvements, but we wanted to get it at least to the point we could meet together uh, inside. And we're so blessed to see you today. Uh, if, if I can make a confession to you, I was a little bit nervous. I, I am a little bit nervous because I wanted to uh, hopefully get a good response. I hope that you uh, w would be happy with the, the work we're putting in, the changes we've been making to try to just uh, minister to more people, to get the gospel out more uh, and more. And uh, I, my belief is that God's going to use what we're doing. And just like he took the loaves and fishes, he took the little bit that we've had and he's going to multiply it and it's going to reach more and more people. And God kind of spoke to my heart. He sort of uh, convicted my heart a little bit as, as we were, you know, getting prepared, getting the, the, the chairs set up and looking at the new carpet. You may notice we still, uh, we're going to have the stage done in, in the next few days and people have been working so hard. The tile is just looking beautiful. All the lighting and sound. Actually, can we get the lights up a little bit so people will be able to see their notes and they can see this carpet that we worked so hard to get in? Let's get the, the lights on so I can see your smiling faces. Anybody up there, I'm speaking to the Lord in the heavens. <laughs> I know it's going to happen. Let there be light, he said. There you are. Yeah, it's so good to see you guys. Let's leave those up so they can see and follow along with us. We may even need a little more on the back. Those, that's where our most blind people sit. So, uh, uh, what, what I wanted to uh, speak to you about this morning it goes right along with the processes we've been implementing here at the church with things that we want to see fulfilled here. Uh, we've been walking through a series called Remembering Our Heroes, uh, dealing with people that have been through a whole lot. In, in God's Word, we see people, men and women of faith, who while we might feel like we've gone through a lot of turmoil, while we might feel like we're in the midst of a lot of trouble, God's helped some people get through way worse than we've already uh, been going through. And to hear their stories, to hear their accounts, I believe is an encouragement. And this week, we're going to talk about the account of Joseph. And this is not the Christmas story, Joseph, but this is from the Old Testament. The boy with the coat of many colors. If you remember his account uh, from Sunday school or kids' church or if you've read it on your own. But I want to start off with our key scripture in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. It says, Therefore... Since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Can I ask you to pray for me and pray with me that God's will would be accomplished in this place today? Heavenly Father, thank you for your presence. Thank you for your goodness to us. And God, I also thank you for your word. I believe for it to come alive in our hearts right now, for you to speak to us and Holy Spirit move among us. In the name of Jesus, I pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Now, 
Again, I don't want y'all to get too comfortable being inside. I liked, you know, in the parking lot, everybody's honking their horns and stuff. So y'all help me preach a little bit. Here's my game plan today. I'm going to teach a little to start off, and then I'm going to preach a little. That okay with anybody? I want to kind of give you the back story and then hopefully just give you the good news about what the story of Joseph teaches us. As I told you, I was a little nervous. Uh, Victoria and I both have just really prayed, and, and I, I know much of the leadership. We never want to do anything that disappoints you. We never want to do anything that thinks, makes you think our heart is not just for God's will to be accomplished. And you never know. Are people going to like change? Or are they going to be okay with the things you're doing? The Holy Spirit really spoke to me and encouraged me. He, he rebuked me a little, convicted me a little bit. And he just, I felt like the Lord said, son, this isn't even really what it's all about. Can I declare to us today that whether we're on pink carpet or gray carpet, I'm looking forward to walking on streets of gold someday. And whether we got sounds and light and all, all those things, as long as we got the presence of God, that's all we need. And what our heart is, what my goal is, is to see God move in our lives so that we can go out and do what we've been called to do, which is to share the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ with a lost and dying world. We want to have a great place to bring them, a great home base to disciple them, but really this is just a temporary building. Our souls, our eternity is what matters. Praise God for that. And you see in the story of Joseph, he's one of those witnesses that I believe is spoken of in the book of Hebrews. Uh, Hebrews 12 actually if you go back the chapter before it, Hebrews 11, it talks about uh, great men and women of the faith, like we've, we've spoken of the last two weeks, Noah and Moses and, and Abraham, and we'll go on and talk about others of the faith that are, are mentioned and alluded to, uh, the hall of faith, some people call it, uh, men and women that showed their true faith in God that no matter what went on in the world, no matter what went on in their lives, they kept their eyes on the Lord and on his promises and I believe if they could step down out of that great arena of witnesses that the Bible speaks of and give us words of encouragement, that if Joseph could be standing before us today, his instruction, his encouragement would be this first blank, if you want to follow along with me. When life isn't turning out the way you planned, which during this building process, things haven't always gone like we planned. We didn't plan for there to be a sewage backup. Come somebody say, praise the Lord. I didn't plan that at all. But when life isn't turning out the way you planned, don't give up on your dreams. The story of Joseph, part of it is found in Genesis 37. And it really goes all the way to Genesis chapter 47 and then beyond. But the part that we're going to talk about is really found in those ten chapters. I just want to share a few verses. And then I want to challenge you because I don't have time to read you ten verses of scripture. So I'm going to hit the... The timeline as best I can, but read the story of Joseph. Read, it's in the Bible for a reason, and, and you will be encouraged, you will be challenged by what he went through and what God brought him through. But right here in chapter 37, verses 5 through 7, it says, Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. You ever been really excited about something, and you tell somebody else about it, and they just don't match your excitement? Isn't that the best feeling? You're just so happy to share this news. And they're like, yes, okay, that's fine. He's told his brothers, and not only are they not excited, it says they hated him all the more. He said to them, listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field when suddenly my sheaf rose up and stood upright while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. Here comes the dreamer, they said to each other. Come now, let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns and say that a ferocious animal has devoured him. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. With brothers like those. Anybody else got family kind of like that? I hope not. just want to make a plug. We do have counseling now available and therapy for you. If you do have family like that, Sarah Fulfer is on on staff here to, to be able to minister to you, and I hope you'll look into that. But this, this account, and again, we're jumping ahead a little bit. Joseph has this dream. He shares it with his brothers. He has another dream about uh, the, the moon and the sun and, and stars that, that equal the number of his, of his brothers, and all of them bowed down to him, and they just 
When he told them of his dreams, they, they became angry with him. They thought, how dare you? You think we're going to bow down to you? Even when he told his parents, they said, do you seriously believe that's what's going to happen? Can I tell you, church, when God tells you something, you need to know it's the Lord speaking to you because other people may try to talk you out of what God has told you. So when God speaks to your heart, make sure it aligns with the word of God because God ain't never going to tell you something that doesn't line up with his word. But when you know that you know it's the word of God, do not listen to the opinions or the words of people. But stand firm in the word of God. When life doesn't go like you planned, don't give up on your dreams. And there's four things that I think if Joseph could warn us about losing hope, losing faith in what God has told us. I want to tell you that God made a promise to this nation When it was founded, we were founded one nation under the one true God. And church, I believe in religious freedom all day, but that don't mean it changes. You can say you believe in this, that, or the other, but there is only one God. There is only one Savior. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, the life. There is no other way to the Father except through him. So while I'm not going to persecute you or put you down, I'm also not going to shy away from speaking the truth in love. That it is all Jesus, all about Jesus, Jesus Christ and him crucified. Jesus is all I need. Anybody believe that this morning? So no matter what's happening, don't ever get so politically correct that you're afraid and ashamed of the gospel. I get sick of being politically correct. Political correctness saves nobody and confuses everybody. And God is not the author of confusion. I believe that with all my heart. So when when you look at this account of Joseph, I want you to know that you shouldn't give up on your dreams even if these next few things happen. Even if you didn't start off well. Anybody's life feel like this? Like, man, if I could have just been born into a different family, just had a different last name, just had a different start to my life. Even if you didn't start off well, do not give up on your dreams. Joseph's dream didn't start off well. Again, let me go over his timeline just just briefly, and I hope you're familiar enough you can follow along. And if not, read his story, read his account in the book of Genesis. But after he told his family of his dreams, his brothers got so mad, and it says they threw him in, in a cistern. That's a big word for a pit or a well that they had dug in the ground. And so if you didn't start off well, imagine starting off in a well. Because that's kind of what Joseph did. His brothers got so mad, they threw him in this pit to die. One of his brothers, Reuben, got so convicted, he thought, we can't just let our, our brother die. And there he saw some slave traders pass by. And he said, let's talk to his other brothers. Let's, you know, I, I'm going to sneak out and, and get him out of that well at night. But they saw the slave traders. They said, let's sell him. Let's make some money off of him. So at least they didn't kill him. But they sold him. And the people that took him into the nation of Egypt, where if you know his account, if you know his story, he was put into the household of Potiphar, kind of, kind of a nobility, somebody important in the land of Egypt. And, and there, everywhere Joseph would go, because God had made him this promise, and he just did what God had told him to do, no matter where he was, he believed in the promise of God, he began to get favor in Potiphar's house, to where Potiphar put him over all of his personal affairs. But speaking of affairs, Potiphar's wife began to have wrong feelings toward Joseph and and made a move on him. And when he didn't reciprocate, when he didn't return her advances, she lied about him. It says she grabbed hold of his cloak as he tried to run away from her. And she screamed and said, he was trying to abuse me. He was trying to take advantage of me. And now who was going to believe this young man who had been sold to this household? They believed the lie of Potiphar's wife, and he was thrown into Pharaoh's prison. And even there, even in prison, because he did not give up on on God's promises, because he did not change his character or who he'd been called to be, he was given favor in the prison. To where the guards even trusted him, and they started putting him over the affairs of the prison. Even if things don't start well, don't give up on your dreams. Because while in that prison, some of the Pharaoh's Men, his butler, his baker, they began to tell Joseph of these dreams they had had and what they meant. And he interpreted them. And one of those men's dreams meant that 
Sadly, he was going to be put to death, but the other one was going to return to his office, return to serving Pharaoh. And Joseph said, will you please remember me when you get back in front of Pharaoh and tell him I'm in here wrongfully. Let him know what's going on. And sadly, that man forgot about him, forgot about him in prison until the Pharaoh began to have dreams that troubled him. Church, you may have thought your dream is long gone. You may think that your talents, your gifts, your abilities don't matter anymore because of the current situation you're in. But even if you don't start well, God has a plan for you that the enemy cannot get off track and cannot defeat. If you will not lose faith in what God has told you and what he has promised you. In the book of 1 Timothy chapter 1, the apostle Paul writes these words. He says, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has given me strength, that he considered me faithful, appointing me to his service, even though I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. If you know the Apostle Paul's background, before he started writing more books of the New Testament than anybody else, before God worked through him in a mighty way, Basically, how he spent his days was persecuting the early church, arresting Christians and having them thrown into prison or even put to death. In fact, he was on his way to do just that when he had a face-to-face encounter with Jesus himself. And it changed his life forever. And he said, if God can do that for me, even though I didn't start off well, I started off totally on the wrong side, totally on the wrong team. God can use me. I'm so thankful, church, that God doesn't care about my past as much as he cares about my future. Because the blood of Jesus took care of my past and paid for my future. Anybody believe that? I got stuff in my past I'm not so proud of. Not even just sinful things. I just got foolishness. There was a craze when I was a kid that I don't love. There's photo evidence of it, sadly. Anybody remember the Reverend St. Vanilla Ice? I'm seeing who I need to pray for the most. When When I was younger, I was in elementary school going into junior high. He was like the big thing where I was growing up. And... I got real into to rap music, and I wanted to be like Vanilla Ice, and he had this haircut. Anybody remember the stripes in the side of your hair? Guess who had that haircut? Uh, and I can't believe my mom, my sanctified, Holy Ghost-filled mama let me have that haircut, but I had her convinced. She didn't know who Vanilla Ice was. She said, oh, that sounds like a good children's musician. I was like, it, it is, mama, and I, I, I convinced her he was a Christian artist. I said, Vanilla is like He's washed white as snow, just like vanilla. <laughs> vanilla ice. I really did. I feel bad, but I did. But she let me cut my hair like that. My school pictures is me grinning like a goober with those stripes in my, in my hair because I was representing this Christian artist, Vanilla Ice. Y'all, I'm not proud of those photos, okay? And thank the Lord, Facebook and all that stuff didn't exist back then because you'll never find those photos. They're hidden. <laughs> I'm not real, not real proud of that. But, uh, you know, we've got things like that in our life where... Uh, I made some embarrassing decisions, maybe bad relationship choices, maybe bad financial decisions, just things you regret, sins, and and things that you're so glad they are covered by the blood of Jesus, then can I challenge you, if they are covered by the blood of Jesus, stop uncovering them. Stop letting the devil bring them back up because Jesus has already put them to rest. And start living out the life God has called you to live. He didn't call you to that old life. He says, I'm calling you forward. Push forward. Persevere this direction. Onward. And, and when, when you realize it doesn't matter if you started off well, then it also doesn't matter this second thing. That even if you didn't start well and even if those closest to you don't support you, never give up on your dreams. Just like Joseph, his brothers, they, they weren't trying to hear what he had to say. They didn't believe in the dreams that that he had told them. They, they got offended by it. And you may have people that have known you a long time. They've known the good and the bad about you. And when you try to turn your life around, they, they don't believe it. That's why you've got to know what God has done in your life and not listen to others. L- listen to the words, uh, what happened to Jesus in Mark 6. It says, isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son? They're talking about the Christ. The brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon aren't his sisters here with us. And they took offense at him. They took offense at Jesus. Jesus said to them, only in his hometown, among his relatives in his own house, is a prophet without honor. 
This is sad, church, but sometimes those that are closest to us, we have the hardest time believing that God can change them. Let's be careful never to do that to anybody else, but also don't you dare let anybody do that to you. What Jesus has done for you, it don't matter if anybody else believes it or not as long as you do. And you believe in what God has changed in your life. You believe that you are a new creature. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old is gone. Can anybody say hallelujah to that? The old is gone. The vanilla eye stripes grew out and I don't have them anymore. Amen. I'm not who I used to be. And by the stripes that Jesus paid on, took on his back, I am healed. My emotional pain is healed. I am delivered. We can overcome because of what Jesus did for us. Amen. The third thing is similar. You know, even if you didn't start off well, even if those closest to you don't believe it, even if your journey is full of surprises, even if your journey, like I said, things didn't go like you planned, don't give up on your dreams. Many people, they have in their mind how God's will is supposed to go for their life. And they want to tell the Lord, you know, well, God, things aren't going the way I thought they would go. That's why God says in his word that his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. They're above ours. It's where faith kicks in. And some people will follow God as long as things are going the way they think they should go. But are we willing to trust God when he leads us in a direction we weren't expecting to go? This is why you need to know how to hear his voice. Be led by the Holy Spirit. Because there's a whole lot of different spirits that will try to drag you around and convince you to go different ways. You need to listen to the one true voice of God. And again, his words will always line up with his word. He gave us a guidebook if you ever get confused. He's never going to tell you to do something that does not line up with his word and his truth. But even if your journey is full of surprises, I want you to remember what might be. It's definitely top five favorite verse of scripture to me. Romans 8, 28. You'll hear me speak it a lot. That we know that all things, somebody say all things. things. Not just good things. Not just things that that I I was looking forward to or thought were going to happen. All things, God works for the good of those who love him. Who have been called according to his purpose. And I'm speaking to somebody who you think God has forgotten you. Because you've been going through a difficult season of your life. And I want you to leave today encouraged by the truth of the word of God. That all things, good, bad, and the ugly, work together for good to those who love God. The story of Joseph, God worked him being thrown in that cistern, in that pit, out for his good. He got sent to Egypt. That's exactly where God needed him so that he could be used To help out his family who didn't believe in his dream. If you know how his story develops and how it turns out, he got thrown into prison. And finally, when Pharaoh started having bad dreams that he couldn't interpret, all his wise men and magicians and astrologers couldn't figure out the meaning, that guy remembered there was somebody in prison that interpreted my dream. And it was just like he said. They called for Joseph to speak to Pharaoh, and he told Pharaoh exactly what his dreams meant. He said, They they are revealing to you that there is going to be seven years of good and then seven years of famine. He had two dreams dealing with this, some cattle and some ears of corn. You can go read it for yourself. But he said it's representing there's going to be seven years of plenty but then seven years of famine. And we need to store up during those good years, during the years of plenty, so that we can get through and survive those seven difficult years, those lean years of want and famine. And... uh, Pharaoh said, sounds like we need somebody, you know, who can be in charge of this, who is wise and can get us through these difficult times and plan during the good times. And he said, I'm putting you in charge. You are second in command. No one will be above you in Egypt except for me. Joseph went from getting thrown in the pit. He was in the pits to Potiphar's house as a servant boy who got lied on and his wife got him kicked out and thrown into prison. He is stuck in prison Somebody forgets about all the good. Have you ever done good for somebody and they don't even thank you? They don't even remember you? But they finally remember this guy. God speaks to him and the promise of God is on his life. And now Pharaoh has made him second in command. I want to tell you that even if it takes a long time, don't you think Joseph wondered, Lord, when is that dream? When are those dreams that you gave me ever going to come to fruition? When will it ever be fulfilled? Even if you didn't start well. Even if 
those closest to you don't believe it. And, and even if your journey doesn't go like you thought and it's full of surprises, even if it takes a long time to realize it, don't give up on your dream. Some of you have gotten tired of waiting. I, I totally get that. I, I keep wondering, and, and now if you disagree with me, let's agree to disagree, but I keep wondering how long we have to go through some of the shutdown procedures. When, when things just seem to, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know what's, what's the right answer here. I'm like, you know, some things are open, some things aren't. Why is this open and this thing's shut? It, you know, why is it all or nothing? It doesn't make any sense. You know, I can't believe we've been, we've been going through this for months now. Anybody else think, man, this will just last a couple weeks? I remember when, when we first talked about you know, doing services online, we thought this will just go on for a few weeks and then we'll be good. We'll be in the clear. Here we are. It is the month of June. And I thought, surely this won't last until Easter. Surely it won't last until Mother's Day. Now we're almost a Father's Day. Still, you know, some things have loosened up, but still, here's this, this pandemic situation. God has still made us promises that, that he's in charge, that he's going to take care of us, that he never leaves us and forsakes us. And I want you to stand on the promises of God, even if it takes a while. In Habakkuk chapter 2, he's speaking to his prophet, and he says, this is even how the promises of God, how the word of God happens sometimes. He says, these things I plan won't happen right away. This is the voice of the Lord speaking. It says, slowly, steadily, surely, the time approaches when the vision will be fulfilled. If it seems slow, do not despair, for these things will surely come to pass. Just be patient. They will not be overdue by a single day. I believe this, that God is an on-time God. Anybody believe that? And God will take care of business exactly when he needs to. We just need to trust in him in the meantime. Joseph lived it out of when he was just a young boy. His daddy's favorite. His daddy bought him this coat of many colors. Life was going so well. That's when he had all those dreams happen. But they did not come to fruition. They were not fulfilled until he went through challenge and trial and disappointment over and over again. But you know what? The promises of God, the Bible says they are yes and amen. They don't change even though our circumstances might change. God's word is always true, and it never returns void. So when God speaks something to you, as long as you trust in it, his word will always happen the way he says it. I think if Joseph could be here to give us some final words of encouragement, he would leave us with a few thoughts. And I just want to share three thoughts that are on my heart to tell you. You know, we started off this morning talking about the word focus. And right now it's hard to turn our focus off of the news. Turn our focus off of the fear mongering and the worry and the stress and all that stuff. But I want to ask you to do something else. Instead of worrying about what's going on, will you focus on what happens in you and not to you? This is when you can see God moving even in bad situations. When you focus on what's happening in you, the character that's happening. James chapter 1 says... Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Well, bless his little heart. That don't sound right. Consider it joy when I face trials. But he says, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Even when the devil tries to fight against you, all he's doing is making you stronger. Can somebody praise God for that? That the testing of your faith develops perseverance. It will grow the character. The fruit of the Spirit can grow if you will allow God's Spirit to lead you even when you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Remember, He is with you always. And I also want you to remember this. When you're going through this stuff, focus on what's happening in you, but also know your response to what's happening. Your response to offense determines your future. Because if the devil can get you to stay mad, if the devil can get you to stay worried, if the devil can get you to live in fear and have a spirit of fear, then you will be led not by the spirit of God but by that spirit of fear. And God doesn't give us that. He gives us a spirit of love and power and a sound mind. That's what the Bible says. And so don't get caught up. Don't get stuck to where your response, because you feel offended. Y'all, there's so much stuff that offends me right now. Can I tell you, I don't think I like anybody some days. Anybody with me? 
You know, it's just like you turn on, I don't even know who to disagree with. All the, the news stations are arguing with one another. And I want to tell you something. When you notice the news stations can't agree on things, somebody's lying. Amen? And all I know is that God is not a human that he should lie. So we need to turn off the TV sometimes, click out of the intranets, and get in the word of God and let his truth wash over us. Let his truth encourage us. I get discouraged hearing about this mess. I'm ready to hear the promises of God that I can stand on, that they don't change. If the economy tanks, if the economy bottoms out, God is still God. Anybody believe that? God is still good, and his word is still true. How you respond will determine your future. Because if you stand on the word of God, if you say, man, and I got joy unspeakable. That means I don't have to explain it to you. I just feel joyful. Do you know you don't have to be happy to feel joy? I may not be happy, but I'm joyful because I got the joy of the Lord, and the joy of the Lord is my strength. And I've got peace that passes understanding. You say, I don't even understand how you're peaceful. That's kind of the point. That's what faith is. I've got peace that passes human understanding. I can't figure out what's going to happen next, but I also can't wait to see what God does next because I just read that it says all things. Somebody say all things. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Some of y'all been through the good, been through the bad, and you kind of look the other. But can I tell you, no matter what you've been through, they will work out for good. Y'all are looking around to see who I was talking about. Just let the Spirit lead you. But no matter what you've been through, it may have beat you up and beat you down. God can bring you through it. But your response to what offends you will determine. Don't let the devil get you mad, get you down, get you discouraged. Genesis 50, this was Joseph's response to his brothers who had got mad at him for sharing his dream. He just wanted them to, to root for him and, and explain to him, maybe help him fulfill what God was sharing on his heart they, they sold him into slavery. They threw him in that pit. They put him down. They gave up on him. They lied to his dad and said he got killed by a ferocious animal. Now that they're back with him face to face, because during the seven years of famine, they had to go somewhere for food. And they had no idea that their brother, what he had gone through and how God had lifted him up. And now they stood before him and did not recognize him because they probably just assumed he was dead or off in some place living in slavery, but instead he's in the palace running the kingdom that has all the food that they needed. And it says that his response to them as they stood before him was that you intended to harm me. What you meant for evil, God turned it around. He intended it for good. And can I tell you that needs to be our response to what's happening in the world today. That the devil intends to harm us. The devil intends to divide us by our co the color of our skin, by our political party, whatever you want to talk about, how you feel about that you should respond to this virus. But a house divided against itself will not stand. That's why as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And I will be unified with, with everybody else that's willing to stand under the banner of Jesus Christ. Because if he is lifted up, he will draw everybody unto himself. He doesn't draw us to a political party. He doesn't draw us to a certain uh, you know, color of our skin or anything like that. He, he doesn't care. He's no respecter of persons, the Bible says. He loves everybody. He died for everybody. We need to get over ourselves and realize what the devil means for evil, God intends it for good. And it can make us stronger. It can grow us closer together. And, and this is the final thing that you got to know about dreams. And I, I asked the kiddos to come in here for this. And, and I'm so thankful for our children's workers, the ministry that they have. Would y'all just give a big hand to these, these children that come out to hear the word of God and those that help them learn it. Here's the final thought I want to leave you with today in the final scripture. I want you to understand that every dream, you will see this all throughout this series, when God makes a promise to people, when God puts something on, on people's hearts, every dream has tough times. But we have to remember that God is always with you. And look, looking at these kids, it, it actually, it, it makes me feel very emotional. Because church, this is our future. And I get emotional thinking about how messed up the enemy is trying to make this world that they're going to have to live in. I get emotional thinking about they're going to have to face things. How many of you, been, of you in here, you've been on this planet for, for quite a few years and you never thought you'd see things get like they are right now. I never thought, last night as I was seeing news reports of what was happening in Atlanta. Did y'all see the rioting? 
I mean, they burned down a Wendy's. Y'all, have they, ever, have they never had their chili? Why would you burn down a Wendy's? And I know it was, I don't mean to make light. I know it's a, a really sad and desperate situation. But in all seriousness, what are we doing? We're ripping the greatest nation in the world apart. This nation that God has blessed us with. We're taking it for granted and we're letting it get taken from us. Because we're taking it from one another. We're treating each other so poorly. I want you to always remember this. Every dream has tough times. But please remember, God is always with you. Because when I think about my kids, here sits my little girl on the front row, five years old, and my little boy that's seven. I got a baby back in the nursery, two years old, and my, my oldest is running the camera over there. I'm so proud of him helping out. But I think about the fact that I'm not always going to be here Those of you that have children and grandchildren, I wonder if you're like me and you ever feel overwhelmed at the thought of you being gone and how will they make it in this world. The same God that we serve, that never left us and never forsook us, they need to know him. They need to know the one true God because he will always be with them. Even when we're gone on to glory, they can still experience the glory of God in their life and in this world. Psalm 139, verses 8 through 10 says, If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise up on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. There's a lot of reasons why I serve God. The main reason, and really the only reason that, the reason that matters most, is because of what God did for me. God loved me first. When I was very unlovable, when I was sporting those vanilla ice haircuts, God loved me. Amen. That's reason enough. But I want to tell you, there's other reasons, and a lot of them are sitting right here. Is I want God to use my life to make a difference in in the future generations. I don't believe we have to settle for living in a world like we're living in right now. I know what the book of Revelation, some of the things that that are said, and, and I know some of the things, but just like we read about Noah and his story God was about to wipe out all of humanity But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord We're going to talk about Abraham Next week on Father's Day Father Abraham, get it? In his, in his life you, you saw He, he sought God to, to help save his family That were living in a wicked and evil place In Sodom and Gomorrah And he said, there's just a few people there Would you spare them? And God's mercy Endures forever, the word says. God's, God doesn't will that any should perish if, if we would just turn our hearts to him. He gives us chance after chance. And I want to call the church to prayer this morning for these future generations. And I pray that you would live your life not just for yourself, but for others. Joseph the dream that God put on his heart, Joseph was utilized. Joseph was called to be put in a position to be able to save his family that had wanted to put him to death. They threw him in a pit to die. And I believe that the Lord can use us to save our family. That They're not even trying to hear the truth from us right now. But the, the, the story that your life will tell, the testimony, the Bible says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. God can use our life. God can use our testimony to save others. God can use our hardships. All things work together for good. He can use our pain, our struggles to be a, a testimony to other people. And I want to ask you, if, if you would, to, to bow your heads and bow your hearts right where you're at. And if you don't know the Lord as your Savior, if you don't know Jesus as your Savior and Lord, I pray that 
while him dying on the cross is plenty reason enough for you to give your life to him, I want you to understand the price he paid for you. While his grace is free and it is amazing, we just sang about that, it was not cheap. And he died for you that you would give your entire life for him. And this world needs us to be the hands and feet of Jesus. It needs us to be a light in a dark and dying world. And you may need to give your life to the Lord fully. Maybe really what, what, you, what you did when you first prayed your prayer and gave your life to God was you just wanted to go to heaven. And that's great. Everybody should want that. I want you to understand the fullness of the gospel, though. Jesus didn't just call us to go to heaven. He said, I called you to go into all the world, to give your life, to share the good news with others. And if you need to make a real commitment or a recommitment or to give your life to the Lord for the first time, now's your opportunity. I believe these young people are worth it. I believe this next generation, I believe the current situation we're in is worth people being fully committed to God because we need Jesus now more than ever. So let's quit playing games and beating around the bush and speak the truth in love. If you want to make that decision today, I'd like to pray over you and pray with you that you would give your full life to God. Would you just raise your hand where you're at and say, God, I'm making a new commitment or a, 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 a real commitment to you. Yes, anybody else? You can put your hands down after you raise them. Yeah, anybody? Praise God. These young, young kiddos are doing it. Praise God for your boldness. Could we pray together right now that the Lord would just save us, change our hearts, forgive us of our sins, and then we would live a life that glorifies God and that fulfills the dream that God has put on our heart to see as many people go to heaven as possible. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your son Jesus to live and then to die for our sins. We confess that we've all sinned and we need him as our Lord and Savior. Jesus, we need you. Forgive us of our sins. We repent and turn of our old life. Make us new to live for you. And God, I pray as we make this commitment, it's not just some emotional decision, but it's a complete commitment to the cause of Christ. And we would never be the same in Jesus' name. But now we know that we're, we're saved by you. You've covered our past by your blood. Now we give our life to telling other people, to showing other people the way, the truth, and the life that is Jesus. And we thank you, God, for what you've done in this place, and we magnify you. Would somebody give God praise for these hearts and lives that have just made that commitment? Glory to you, God. We praise you. Now, I want, I want to ask the kids before we dismiss. They're, Pastor Mark's going to come and make some announcements. They're going to sing us out in just a moment. But helpers, would, would all you kids, could you come stand right here by me? Would you, I won't bite. I won't make you do anything embarrassing. And I want to ask the, the not as young people that are sitting out there. Do y'all know some of those people? Some of your family, your parents, your friends, your grandparents. Could we pray together? And, and you kids leaders and, and, and those in the ministry, will you stand here with me? And would those of you at your seat, would you extend your hand this way? And I'm believing this. This is the future, and, and this is actually the church right now. And I, I, I've got a dream in my heart that our young people are going to be saved. That the word of God is greater than the lies of the news media or of society, all the distractions. They're, they're going to have it different, and they're going to face difficulties that we didn't have to face. But I believe God will be with them always. Even when we're long gone, the spirit of God can, can live in their hearts and in their lives Will you join with me in praying that they would give their lives to God at a young age and not have to make some of the mistakes that you and I made? Not have to go some, down some of the paths we went, but follow the path of God and let's live a life that represents Jesus to this generation. Would you extend your hand this way? And if you don't have a child, you don't have a grandkid, put, if you got somebody in your mind, we're praying for them too. Let's believe God for them to be saved and committed to the Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for these precious boys and girls that are so loved by us and even more loved by you. I speak protection over their hearts and minds that the lies and the works of the enemy would be stopped, that his devices would not prosper against them. No weapon formed against their little lives will prosper, but you would protect them and you would call them to your truth. 
Let them know how important they are, how great they are in your kingdom, how loved they are, God. That no matter what anybody ever says to them or does to them, Jesus said, I love you and I've called you to do great things. Let them give their life to you fully and live for you all their days. I pray that blessing over them in the name of Jesus. And all in agreement said, amen and amen. Would you give these kiddos a big hand? Y'all can be seated. Thank you so much for being with us today. Pastor Mark's going to come at this time.